what people might associate with the ThinkPad T series is that it's really robust. It just works, and occasionally, if there is a functionality or the form. In that sense, the T14 is not any different. Most of the change are inside with the new Ryzen option, AX Wi-Fi. Additionally, three new keyboard shortcuts. Otherwise, it's a very similar machine. There'll probably be many incremental improvements inside that we wouldn't be able to tell. And the T14 is not a new, new product, if that makes sense. If you're thinking of the T14 versus the T14S, we've already covered a little bit in the blog. But what we'll say is the T14 is actually really impressively thin and light. And why is this? If we're being a little bit creative with the interpretation, then I will probably say that the T14 is already an S version. We just didn't quite notice when it happened. This is logical chart for 80, for 90, 14. That's the marketing representation of the advancement. If we creatively change this, and you're very welcome to disagree. What I'll simply say is that the T480S model, a lot of that chassis has become what shaped the T490, and the T490 subsequently became the T14. Certainly, the T490 also absorbs some of the old the design cues from the previous normal model, for instance, the material, the casing. But, but for me, the T480S is a lot closer to this T14. There's an imposter here, and it's not the T14. When the X390 came out, some people observed that the, the motherboard was very similar to the T490S. So, market demand for something thin and light. This is something thin and light. There's some catches, no Ethernet, no upgradable RAM, and uh, no suitable keyboard. Uh, some people like it, some people might be a little bit not quite sure. But, you know, that's our understanding of it. When we look closer, you can see the texture of the finish is not actually the same. So on the AMD model, it's more finely grained, and on the Intel model, it's just a little bit less finely grained. So when we try to drag it this way, on the AMD model, you can't. On the Intel model, I can. So a little bit more grippy on the Intel model. I don't know if this is a batch-specific variation. The boards are very similar, except the Thunderbolt 3 is Intel model only. On the AMD model, it's just a USB-C. The HDMI spec on the Intel is version 1.4. It's a slightly newer 2.0 standard on the AMD. We'd certainly like for there to be a full-size SD card. In all realities, it seems many PC manufacturers are moving away from this. Personally, I always prefer to use an external SD card reader for the simple reason the contact points will wear out. And if it does, you'd rather it's on the external card reader, which can be replaced. No difference on the other side. Some people will opt in for the optional smart card reader. Some customers won't. On the lighter and thinner models from some manufacturers, they've moved away from the Ethernet port. So it's really good to see it here, and we hope that it stays. For many use cases, it's still a really useful feature without having to have a dongle. We didn't order a 4G model, but the SIMS card could be replaced on our unit. To show you how far we've come, I've stacked a T14 on top of the T440P. And you can see the thickness difference is really noticeable. Align the edge to the rear right. And you can see it's quite obvious. Keep in mind, T14 is by no means the thinnest ThinkPad these days. That would go to the carbon. Let's take a look on the inside. As you can see, it user serviceable RAM slot. We've put in a 32 gig in addition to the 16 on board. Very nice. Um, Spice SD, tiny actually. Um, hope to upgrade later. Um, wireless card thankfully it can be upgraded or changed easily and not part of the motherboard didn't order the 4g but the cable seems to be there the cmos battery the battery and plastic filler we didn't order the smart card models and lastly but not least the double heat sink pipe so that's very nice slightly unexpected but happy to take it don't know if it's the same on the ryzen 5 this is ryzen 7 model inside the chassis it's a little bit hard to distinguish from the last generation t495 stuff on top the webcam cover is very firm on this unit. It could be a little bit less firm and still be very functional. I really appreciate that the display can be easily serviced than the models with integrated bezel. On the inside, the keyboard gives a good response. And of course, I'm really happy to see upwards firing speaker, same as the T495. The click button gives a prompt feedback. And of course, one hopes that the next generation will give a little bit deeper press. The trackpad has a good amount of friction. Some people might like this. Personally, I just use the external mouse as soon as I can to increase productivity. The texture on the inside is a soft rubbery finish. It gives a reassuring sense that the machine is very durable. So this key, it doesn't sound normal, it doesn't feel normal, it's catching onto the edge of the keyboard frame. So this is just one misaligned key. When you see lots of ThinkPad, majority of the ThinkPad key, it's just such a joy to type on, really, especially for longer documents. So we know this is isolated because very, very rarely you get one or two laptops out of a lot and the key, one or two keys on those keyboards is a little bit awkward like this one. 
as we can see up here on another T14, you know, it doesn't happen. So we know it's isolated and we also know the newer support is superb. So we know that we could help. So for us, this is totally not a problem. We are actually really embarrassed to mention this issue because it's, we know it's covered. But you know, as you can see here, the gap is a little bit more. So hopefully they can reset it when they fit the keyboard. Small variation across the units, but definitely noticeable. So the screen option that you get is really similar to what you get with the Intel. There is one exception, which is the Dolby Vision HDR screen, that 10-bit, really stunning panel, is Intel only for the time being. We've got the 400-nit low-powered display here. Very good in versatility, whether you're drifting in office or to some more slight meeting room that's a little bit brighter. Personally, I found the 250 to be still okay. I know some people want something a little bit brighter. There's a 300-nit option, which is the touchscreen. Um, just be a little bit conscious that one, it doesn't have the glass cover, so if you nudge it, don't do it too hard. The privacy panel probably suggests that only get it if you actually do need the privacy aspect of it because the viewing angle sometimes may be a little bit less optimal than normal screens. Voice at the back of one's head tells you that AMD is still being treated like not quite a first tier vendor because the lack of Dolby Vision screen is intriguing. This is perfect machine to edit video on. And of course that panel will be glossy so it's not for everybody even if you could get it. If Lenovo did offer the upgrade, then I think the T14 with AMD would be quite a bit more compelling. Personally, I'm just happy that the panel, the, the one just above 720p, is finally gone, the TM panel, It's um, as far as the UK configuration is concerned. So that's great, finally. This screen is generally okay. Manufacturers multi-source their displays, so every display you get will be a little bit different. But most of the time, they'll be just fine. So it's best not to extrapolate too much. There is some backlight bleed on the edge of the display. This is usually quite typical of the LCD displays. It looks much better in person. The viewing angle is typically very good. And looking up, the viewing angle is still very good. Very little discoloration. In the future, it would be nice if we could have higher than 60Hz refresh rate on ThinkPad displays. In the meanwhile, it's probably easier by far to get an external display with high refresh rate if you need one. To get a better idea of the temperature, we've played Spotify for the last 6 minutes along with this fireplace video, as well as um, five news sites that refresh every 20 seconds. On this chassis, as you can see on the heat map, the hotter aspect of it is usually around the vent. The center of it can also get a little bit hot, as well as the back, but the palm rise is workable. And of course, we've attached a separate um, heat map to show the less good case scenario. This is when we were running the Heaven Benchmark, pretty much a full-on workload for 30 minutes. That one gets a little bit toasty. We've also added a temperature of the base um, whilst it's doing the light workload. So the Spotify, YouTube, and five news tabs refreshing in 20 seconds. As you can see, this bit and that gets a little bit hot. This is a lighter workload. Of course, we've added a video of the heavier workload. This is probably the worst case estimate. You, you can see a little heat on this one, but I think this is really very synthetic driven. You're probably going to have a little bit of trouble to get to this temperature every day, if that makes sense. What I would probably suggest is when it's running on heavy workload, put it on a desk or a laptop cooler. That's going to be much better than on your lab. It's uh, heat-wise, it's quite manageable. When we're doing the tab reload, we've got 70% left. We are battery remaining. Reasonably, this is not heavy. It's not light either. When we run the Heaven Benchmark, the average temperature on the AMD is around 90 degrees and around 87 on the Intel. But just keep in mind that the AMD is running it at a faster speed. There is a really high 108. It could be just for a few milliseconds, but that's in the peak scenario because the graphics and the CPU are both very powerful. Yeah, whereas with the Intel, it doesn't go above 101. To be clear, regardless of what processor you pick, the T14 is not a gaming laptop. It doesn't claim to be. This is a business laptop. The AMD model has a slightly more powerful uh, integrated graphics the square difference is quite noticeable. 
The Intel model can have, in some regions, hopefully the NVIDIA option. The performance will be similar to the AMD version, but you would pay a premium. At the moment, that configuration is not available yet. Additionally, on the Intel model, you will be able to use an external GPU through the Thunderbolt 3, even though it's at the slower X2 speed. You can't do that on the AMD because there's no Thunderbolt 3. So with AMD, it's faster across the board than the Intel integrated only. But if you do want more flexibility, then maybe look at the Intel. It really depends on what makes sense for your workload. For Ryzen 4000 laptops, it's still quite early days in terms of figuring out what's the optimal RAM and which channel is better, especially in the constrained cases, which is what we have here. On here, the base performance is better than the Intel, regardless of whether you use single channel or two channel. But with any of the two channel, the performance seems to be up quite a bit. We've also tested Geekbench, which was quite interesting in that the single channel was okay, and the two channel really flew in terms of the results. Additionally, in Geekbench, when you run asymmetrically match RAM, for instance, 16 plus 32, it did affect the performance, but not as much as we thought it would. This, it might be certain workload is more affected by this, but what it also probably means is on the Lenovo T14, if you want more RAM and optimal performance, the 16 plus 16 is probably the optimal option, unless you want to go with 16 plus 32, in which case, in some applications, it might be a little bit slower. But as mentioned, this is very early hands-on, and I'm sure a review site will be able to look at more detail. So the Geekbench, there's some performance degradation on battery versus when it's plugged in. That's fairly normal. When you go from single channel to do channel, there seems to be a noticeable performance jump. It seems to like any of the do channel configuration over single channel. 48 gigabytes um, RAM, although it's not as fast as paired RAM, it's um, better than the single channel. When you look at the R15, R20 result, uh, they're fairly promising. There's um, very little performance degradation when you switch on to the battery. Multi-channel seems to get you a better result than the single channel, which I think is uh, quite predictable. The R15 results is higher than the T14S. I think this is rough what we expect, around 5-10% to difference. Multi-threaded wise, it's uh, comparable to Intel 6-core, which is quite promising. And in terms of the single performance, it's similar, sometimes it lags very slightly behind the Intel, but most of the time they're quite tight. Looking at this, it seems for the T14, 8 plus 8 gig of RAM or 16 plus 16 are the easy ones to recommend. Of course, because you're making this decision upfront, there's some costing aspect to this. If it's a case of um, you know you need more RAM in the future, then getting 16 today and more later, that would be a sensible option. If you know from day one that you're not going to use more than 16 gig, then the 8 gig on board should also be okay. I would think on the price, if it's not much difference, maxing out that on board would mean that you can have a little bit more flexibility later. It seems that the performance boost when you go on to do channel is still a really early stage impression. What we found, T14 seems to manage Intel and AMD versions slightly differently. Intel models seem to have a 25 volts PL1, seem to be able to keep around 25 volts. Whereas the AMD, after about 10 seconds, it gets managed down to about 23, sometimes 22 and a half. 10 percent less power supplied to the AMD model, for some reason. I'm sure if it's to make the Intel model look more comparable, or if it's something else. Just want to reserve judgment and suggest, you know, go and find other reviews. The AMD's use case has been really clearly offline. If you want a multi-threaded performance, that's a really clear go-to, provided you can overlook Thunderbolt 3. With Intel, it's going to be the same as what you had before, so it's a familiar, it's a more predictable solution. You have the Thunderbolt 3, additionally you have the Dolby Vision screen, which is Intel only. I mean, obviously I hope that screen gets ported onto the AMD model. Some people might get an external screen, but you can't take it with you as easily. Outside of Lenovo, the HP might be an interesting one. It uh, has uh, two RAM slots, and um, that's going to be interesting, whether it cools the system enough and lets the processor run fast enough. That's going to be seen. Certainly going to next year, the T14 G2 presumably will be even more competitive. Within Lenovo's ecosystem, it might be also helpful to look at the E14 and the L14, just to see how they stack. They both have the Ryzen options. So far at the launch, we've not really seen the Ryzen 3 option. I presume that's going to be available when AMD has more chips. That will probably help to bring the price down a little bit. But for the time being, I think even the Ryzen 5 might still be quite fast for many people. And anyway, we hope this has been helpful. Any comment, just uh, let us know.